This kit comes with everything you need to recreate Frida Kahlo's art studio inside of a paint can. The kit comes with a tile floor printed on cardstock, and to give the tile some dimension, I'm using a ball stylus and a couple layers of cereal box to indent the grout lines. I always like to customize kits by making simple changes to add a little bit more detail or realism. To make the tiles look a little older and protect the paper, I'm mixing a little bit of brown paint into matte Mod Podge. As a finishing touch, I'm using a little bit of brown paint on my brush to paint just the edges of the floor. I'll be adding a lot of furniture and accessories to the room, but the very edges of the room will remain empty, so this step just adds a little bit more detail and interest. Now that I have a fantastic foundation, I need some furniture. The kit includes some laser cut wood pieces for making Frida's desk. Laser cutters leave small tabs to keep the piece from falling into the machine, so I'm cutting those with my X-Acto knife and sanding them smooth. The instructions in the kit suggest staining the wood pieces before assembly, so I'm using my Minwax stain pen. I usually use watered down paint as stain since stain gives off an odor I don't like, but I really love the convenience of these pens for small projects like this. If you choose to assemble the table before staining, you run the risk of areas of leaked glue repelling the stain and leaving pale spots, which is why the kit suggests staining first. These laser cut pieces of wood have dark edges where the laser charred the wood and I'm choosing to leave them dark and only staining the face. If you'd like to, you could sand the charred edges and stain them, but I like to avoid sanding as much as I can. To begin assembly, I'm gluing a drawer on either side of one of these blocks to glue underneath the tabletop. I'm using a water-based glue called Canopy Glue in a small squeeze bottle. This desk looks a little bit funky and has an interesting design, but it's actually a really close replica of Frida Kahlo's desk. Frida Kahlo was born in Mexico in 1907. At the age of six, she contracted polio and was bedridden for nine months. Her bout of polio left her with a limp, but she ultimately ended up in a wheelchair because of an accident that happened when she was 18. Later, I'll accessorize this desk and tell you more about that accident, but for now, I'm going to start preparing her art on canvases. The kit comes with these cool printed art pieces on a really realistic looking canvas and instructs you to cover the back with some white glue to help stiffen them up. Frida was known for her self-portraits featuring her dark unibrow, so the kit includes a couple of those plus some other pieces and empty canvases. To make them look like staple backed canvases, it also includes some cut out wood frames. The instructions say to sand off the dark charred edges, so I followed that step and instead of using the tacky glue that's recommended, I used some Fabri-Tac to attach the canvas to my frame. After attaching the front, I add some extra on the edges and fold the two longest sides. Then I cut a small slit on each side and fold over the top and bottom of the canvas. To finish them, I cut off the flaps and folded the extra canvas over on the back. This largest canvas will be featured on the artist easel I'll be making soon. I repeated the steps for creating the rest of the art, making sure to choose the correct frame size for each canvas. When it came time to assemble the artist easel, things went a little bit sideways because I glued the wrong piece in between the two sides. I did ultimately discover the mistake and rectify it. With the main structure complete, I assembled the easel back so I'd have somewhere to rest my art. I used the height of the piece of art I chose as a guide for where to glue part D of the kit. 
Then I glued the pieces together to prep for paint. Rather than staining all of the pieces before assembly, I decided to assemble the easel first, knowing I would be painting and aging it. I'm using some watered down brown paint to add color to the wood and I'll also be adding some paint splatter to make it look like Frida actually used this easel. The kit also comes with an artist palette, which I'll paint at the same time as the easel. The laser cutter left some really sharp edges, so I'm rounding them with sandpaper to give it a more natural look. To make the palette look used, I'm beginning with an uneven base coat of brown. I'm adding brown on the easel as a base coat for some splatter I'll add later, and also to cover up some of the unsightly glue marks on the back. In an effort to help the colorful paint splatters stand out later, I'm adding some white paint as a base coat, which right now kind of looks like bird droppings. I use really cheap acrylic paint, so if I add those colors directly to the wood, it won't show up very well, which is why I'm creating this white base coat. To make it look more convincing, I chose colors that I can see in the paintings I added to frames earlier. The paint palette was beginning to look like a pizza, so I decided to smudge the colors up a bit. To make it look like there's a dirty little towel hanging off of the easel, I cut a piece of used paper towel, added some watered down white glue, and hung it on the side of the easel. I used white glue to secure it. The kit includes some beads to use as knobs, so I glued one in place. I love how used and old this easel looks, so now I'm moving on to accessorizing the desk. To start, I'm using a piece of paper to mask the tabletop and using some black chalk pastels to create a mark. I love these 3D printed bottles the kit includes, and they're actually hollow inside, so I tried to fill them with paint. First, I tried to drip or poke water down paint inside. Next, I tried to fill them with water, but that didn't work. And then I tried to use a very tiny brush to paint a small amount inside, and that worked quite well. I was determined to overcome the tiny air pocket inside of the jars, so I tried this needle tool and a sewing needle and even employed a toothbrush. And then I decided perhaps I could just squish some pigment powders into the bottle and then add water later. Turns out the small paintbrush worked best for filling the jars. Then I decided to make some lids. To create a lid, I cut a small circle in some aluminum tape and stuck it to the top. But I couldn't get it to look right, so on to plan B. Using some scrap paper, I cut a small strip and glued it around the neck of the jar. Then I filled the small hole at the top with glue rather than trying to cut a tiny piece of paper to cap it off. I made lids for three of the jars and painted them silver and then added small bits of paint to make them look used. To create some pastels, I cut out the small pastel stick and cut off the little burr. And then I used different color markers to color the pieces of pastel. For added realism, I made sure to cover all four sides. I'm cutting up the single long stick to make it into multiple pieces of pastel and then I colored the ends so the wood wouldn't be visible. The kit comes with this pastel box so you're supposed to just rest the pastels on top with no sides but I decided to use some of my scraps to form a box. After sanding off the words and making the wood thinner, I capped off both sides and the ends and sanded the excess to make it a rectangle. To make this little wooden box look like a paper box, I'm painting it white.
Chalk pastels are dry and powdery, so my boxes of pastels have streaks inside of them, so I use some different colors to create some streaking inside and a little bit of wear and tear on the outside. To add the pastels to the box, I used a small amount of glue and a sewing needle. It's looking great, but eventually I realize it's out of scale for the tabletop, so I... you'll see what happens. For the last bit of laser cut decor, I'm making this mirror. This is my favorite type of project to use the stain pen on because the pieces are really tiny and I can easily stain them in place without any risk of the pieces warping. Here I am exhibiting why you should tape your tiny pieces to a popsicle stick before you attempt to seal them. I sandwiched this piece of mirror between the back and the frame. Then I glued the mirror harp to the base. Frida used her mirror as a reference while painting self-portraits, so I slightly tilted the mirror in the harp frame. It was at this point that I realized the pastel box was half as wide as the desk itself, so I scraped out my pastels and cut an eighth of an inch off the front and the side using my miter shears. I cut the pastels in half before gluing them back into the box. I always have a dirty jar of paintbrushes sitting around, so I decided to make one out of my paintbrush protector. To seal the opened end of the plastic tube, I made a small glob of hot glue and stuck the end into it. After trimming off the excess, I cut it to the appropriate height. And don't you worry because the paintbrush bristles are still safe. The kit includes this tiny Ziploc bag with polymer clay for making paintbrushes. I'm conditioning the clay by smushing it around in my hands. This makes it easier to work with and less prone to cracking. I'm rolling the clay into thin snakes to make some very simple paintbrush handles to put in my dirty paint water. The glass jar I made out of the paintbrush protector doesn't have water yet, but I will add some. Since the ends of the paintbrush will be hidden in dirty water, all I needed to do was make the slightly tapered handles. I made a more realistic paintbrush for the desk by adding a teardrop shape of clay to a handle. To bake tiny pieces like this, I use folded up aluminum foil, some pliers to hold it, and my heat gun. I used my faux glass jar to get an idea of how much to trim the paintbrush handles. After learning my lesson with the mirror fiasco, I attached my paintbrush handles to tape to make it a lot easier to paint them. I'm painting them in a variety of brown shades, although I did paint one green paintbrush for spice. I could only paint one side since they were attached to tape, so after they dried, I rolled them over and painted the other side. And then I sealed them with matte Mod Podge. To make the water, I'm filling my little faux glass jar with some dimensional magic from Mod Podge. And to give it a cloudy paint water appearance, I'm adding some chalk pastels and mixing it with a sewing needle. If you don't have resin or something similar, you can also just use Elmer's glue for this. I added the paintbrush handles while the dimensional magic was still wet and glued it to the desk. For some added detail, I'm painting a metal strip above the bristles on the paintbrush before gluing it to the desk. One of the things that initially drew me to this kit was this tiny 3D printed wheelchair. The instructions emphasize to handle this piece carefully because it's delicate, so naturally I immediately snap the handle off. Fortunately, it was really easy to fix with some super glue, although perhaps I should invest in some accelerator because I had to hold it for a few seconds and I'm very impatient. 
Acrylic paint is the preferred paint for resin, but to help it stick a little better, I mixed in some matte Mod Podge to the gray base coat. This wheel will eventually be painted silver and black, so I think a dark gray undercoat is the best color. One coat was a little too translucent for me, so I added a second coat and painted all of the three pieces. Back to Frida Kahlo and why she needed this wheelchair. After surviving polio in 1913 at the age of six, Frida Kahlo was left with a shortened and deformed leg and a limp. Then, at the age of 18, she was in a horrific accident. While studying to be a medical doctor, Frida boarded the bus with her then-boyfriend, and they unfortunately turned into the path of an electric trolley car. Many passengers died from the collision, and Frida herself broke many bones and her back. Frida spent a month in the hospital and many months bedridden while recovering, and her boyfriend never visited her. Frida's injuries were lifelong, and she was forced to leave medical school. During the many months she spent bedridden, Frida began painting and became the artist we know today. With all of the silver and black paint completed, I'm using some brown to create the look of leather. These leather handles couldn't be simpler, but I love the added detail. The paint came out more textured than I would have liked, but I took advantage of it by dry brushing some dark brown and then a lighter color to make the leather look older. I attached each of the wheels with super glue holding them in place for 15 seconds while it set. The instructions suggest using E6000 glue for attaching the cardstock floor, but I'm using Fabri-Tac. To prevent the floor from squeezing the glue out to the sides, I left about a quarter inch of a gap around the edges. To fit the floor inside of the rim of the can, I slightly curled in the edges so it looked like a Pringle and then I pressed it evenly along the bottom. I'd love to hear in the comments what your favorite accessory is. If you don't want to commit permanently to attaching the items, you could use some wax, but I used some white glue to glue all the pieces in place. Since the display can be viewed 360 degrees, I made sure it looked good from every angle. I didn't want to cover up the black smudge I created on the desktop, so I glued the blank canvases to one another so I could display the paint palette on top of them. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. My name is Shira from Queen City Minis, and I create videos like this every week, so please subscribe for more. I really enjoyed putting together this kit, and I'll link more information below so you can get your own. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, I'm sure there's lots of stuff you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.